Welcome to Lockdown Conservation Science. I'm David Mills and I can be contacted at the email address on screen. Today's video follows on from the previous video on the chemistry of alkanes and alkenes and we cover aromatic compounds, alcohols, ketones and carboxylic acids. As usual, an outline for the video is given here. We'll start with a very quick recap of previous material and then we'll look at aromatic molecules. That is to say, carbon containing molecules where the carbon atoms are arranged in a ring. We'll then look at what happens if you take some alkanes and alkenes and add oxygen to them. And we'll see this is how we start to form alcohols, ketones and carboxylic acids. Very quick recap of the previous video and I do suggest you watch the previous video before watching this one. Alkanes are molecules with only a single bond between carbon atoms. Alkenes are molecules with double bonds between carbon atoms. One of the interesting things about the chemistry of carbon and a few other elements besides is that instead of just forming linear molecules where the atoms are just attached to each other and form long chains, they can actually form a ring structure. Now benzene is a chemical derived from crude oil and had long fascinated chemists. Early chemists had worked out its composition. They knew it contained six carbon atoms and six hydrogen, but they couldn't make this fit into a linear molecule. The, the structure just would not make sense. The story goes that the chemist Kekulé fell asleep one night whilst puzzling over the structure of benzene and the answer came to him in a dream in which he saw the Ouroboros, a snake swallowing its own tail. He realised if benzene was a ring, then the structure and its composition will make sense. Now we usually draw benzene, as shown on the left, with alternating single and double bonds. And you may see the bonds drawn in a switched position. In fact, if you look at the molecule drawn on the right, you can see that the bonds are in a different position. It doesn't actually matter, it's all the same molecule, it's just the way it's drawn. Benzene used to be a common solvent, but it's now known to be carcinogenic and has largely been phased out of even professional chemistry. About the only place you may encounter it is in fuel, petrol or gasoline. Benzene is the archetype aromatic compound. Most linear molecules have no smell, but most molecules containing the benzene ring structure have a smell and that's just where the name aromatic comes from. So now we know alkanes have single bonds, alkenes have double bonds and aromatic compounds have rings. While you will never use benzene in conservation you may use or come across references to the use of toluene. Toluene is effectively benzene in which we've replaced one of the hydrogen atoms with a methyl group. And a methyl group is just a carbon atom bonded to three hydrogen atoms. So it has a spare bond which can bond to other carbons. A group is just the name for a small bit of a molecule which can be stuck onto larger molecules. So adding a methyl group to toluene actually changes the property of the molecule and we won't get into why there's some quite deep chemistry there but it turns benzene which is horribly carcinogenic into toluene which while still harmful is much less dangerous than benzene. A fairly common chemical still used in the studio is xylene. It's used as a thinner, a drying modifier and as a solvent and general degreaser. If you look at the bottle or the safety data sheet, you'll actually see it says xylenes, plural. This is because the liquid is a mixture of these three different forms shown. And also just to say, the proper chemical name for xylene is dimethylbenzene. And we can see where that comes from, two methyl groups on a benzene ring, dimethylbenzene. Now we can name these three different ring structures in the same way we name linear molecules by numbering the carbon atoms the methyl groups are attached to. The first is easy. 
the groups are attached to consecutive carbon atoms on the ring so we just name these positions one and two we have two methyl groups so the formal name becomes one two dimethyl benzene this also has the older name ortho xylene but this name is not used anymore in the second form the groups are attached to non-consecutive carbon atoms on the ring. The first methyl is still on position one because the first that we attach a group to is always position one. The second is on position three. So the name is 1,3-dimethylbenzene. And again, this has an older name no longer used. This used to be called metaxylene. In the last form, the groups are attached to positions 1 and 4. This gives the name 1,4-dimethylbenzene. And again, this has an older name, para-xylene. Hopefully, by looking at these, you can see that 1,5 and 1,6-dimethylbenzene are really just the mirror image of 1,2 and 1,3-dimethylbenzene. So they don't actually exist. You can just flip or rotate the molecule such that anything that looks like it would be called 1,5 or 1,6 can actually be named 1,2 or 1,3. You don't just have to stop at adding one type of a group to a benzene ring. You can actually add many more. In theory, we could replace all of the hydrogens on the ring by something else. In the example here, we've taken toluene and added three nitro groups. A nitro group is just a nitrogen molecule or a nitrogen atom bonded to two oxygen molecules. You might not recognise the diagram or even the chemical names given here, but you will have heard the informal name, TNT, trinitrotoluene. It's an explosive. Here we can see that the name 246 trinitrotoluene comes from the positions of the nitro groups. If we call the carbon atom bonded to the methyl group carbon 1, and then we go clockwise or anti-clockwise, we can see the nitro groups are bonded to carbons 2, 4 and 6. We know that a benzene ring with a methyl group attached is toluene, so we can get the name 2, 4, 6 trinitrotoluene. OK, why am I talking about explosives in a conservation science lecture? Well, for one, it usually gets people interested, and two, it's actually a convenient molecule just to practice naming. We've already met toluene, this is just adding something to toluene, it changes the name and actually changes its properties quite a lot. And actually, before this was realised to be an explosive, it was originally being used as a bright yellow dye, but um, you're unlikely to come across anything dyed with this. Some other molecule endings. So we move away from ring structures. Let's consider what happens if you switch hydrogen for oxygen on an alkane or an alkene. What do we get? Oxygen likes to form two bonds. It's happy to form one bond to carbon and one bond to hydrogen. So the simplest molecule we can actually do this with is methane. We remove one hydrogen and replace it by an OH group. An OH group is just an oxygen atom bonded to a hydrogen atom. If we do this, we actually make the simplest alcohol, methanol. We can use the, the rules we've learned in a previous video for naming molecules to name the molecules on this slide. The first molecule is ethanol. We have two carbon atoms, so we get eth. Alcohol adds the suffix ol to a molecule, so the OH group bonded to the carbon is the unalcohol group. We have another carbon which gives us eth, so we get ethanol as the name. The two mo other molecules drawn in the skeletal form are propanol. We have three carbon atoms and an OH group bonded to one of the carbons, gives an alcohol. Three carbons prop, alcohol, ol, propanol, propanol. 
but you can see there is a difference. In the first, the carbon is bonded, the al sorry, the alcohol is bonded to one of the carbons on the end of the molecule. Because this is the most interesting carbon, it's got something else bonded to it, it's more interesting, we call this carbon 1. So in the first case, we get 1 propanol. In the second case, the alcohol or the OH group forming the alcohol group is bonded to the second carbon. This actually changes the properties somewhat, but we get the name 2-propanol just because we're on the second carbon. Hopefully you can see that 3-propanol doesn't exist because that would be identical to 1-propanol. You could just flip the molecule round and what's the third carbon would become the first carbon. The molecule is just symmetric. Now we've said that oxygen likes to form two bonds. And we've seen in alcohol it forms one bond to carbon and one to hydrogen. What if we let it make both bonds to carbon? Can it even do this? Well yes, it can. An oxygen double bonded to carbon, which is also bonded to two other carbons, is called a ketone. The simplest ketone is shown on the slide here, and this is commonly called acetone. Ketones add their own suffix to a molecule, so the formal name for acetone is propan 2 -one. So the suffix "-one", is added to the name of a molecule. The 2 is because the oxygen is bonded to the second carbon. So we can see three carbon atoms, second carbon double bonded to oxygen, propan 2 -one. Going a step further, can we add an OH group to a ketone? Why would we even want to do this? Well, aside from just the pure intellectual challenge, we actually happen to find these types of molecules all around us. Nature got there first before we even started thinking about this. This type of molecule is called a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acids contain a carbon, which is double bonded to an oxygen, and then one of those other carbons is bonded to an OH group. The one you will be most familiar with is on the slide now. This is acetic acid or vinegar. It's also called ethanoic acid as the more full name. More complex carboxylic acids will be encountered when we consider degradation products of paper, parchment and other materials. Without going into too much detail, you might get a feeling for how oxygen, which is a very reactive atom, can attack alkanes or alkenes to produce ketones and carboxylic acids. You have a linear carbon molecule which is just sitting there happily. Oxygen gets in, throws away a hydrogen, starts adding itself into the molecule. And before you know it, you have carboxylic acids and ketones formed. And some of these are responsible for the smell you get from old books that have oxidised. This is where the term oxidation comes in really. And we will encounter this in another video. Now this is where I want to end this video. Again we've covered rather a lot of chemistry in a short time. We've skipped a lot of depth to get to the interesting bits of the chemistry. We've met molecules and structures we will meet again, either as solvents, components of, of adhesive, or when we look at the structure of cellulose in paper or collagen in parchment and how they degrade. If you find these videos useful or interesting, please give them a like on YouTube. Please tell your friends or colleagues. As always, I can be contacted at the email address at the start of the video or via Twitter where I am at DTL or leave a comment down below. See you in the next video when I'll be back in the kitchen looking at serial dilutions, how to correct mistakes when making solutions. Thank you very much.